Yeah, what y'all waiting for? Yeah, everyone's waiting for a big dust up. And I've been asking you to do the dust up that doesn't bring up problem to yourself, but no, everyone wants to do it the hard way. And you want to make it some excitement that really doesn't do anything. Like this week, we'll maybe have the broadcast name already. The Boogaloo Behind Woodshed. Recent story just pops up about this. I've asked you all to not go this way, though this is what people seem to want. They want that excitement. And it's on issues that are real. They need to be stopped, but they don't need to be stopped just because a few people all of a sudden get excited and they try to cause other people to get excited. In fact, I wrote about this very problem back in 1999. And before I get too far into all that, let me be, this is behind the woodshed. BTW RLM 346. For those of you on uh, past cast, post cast, recast, whatever you, wherever you find this place, and we're doing this broadcast today for the links. And you get over that, it'll get you over to our RLM radio uh, website, reallibertymedia.com. And you can follow through the links and start up. And if you can't type in the titles that I will read periodically, you'll find them yourself, or you can go there. I certainly do not touch the depth of it. Most of the stuff I respond to is in the titles, but we'll read a few here and there to give us an idea of where we might find uh, what we need to do. But what we might be finding how we're being misled. In other words, we're learning how to discern. And then what we do is we figure out what we actually need to do, not what we think we need to do, but what we need to do by referencing objective basis and, and, and make it important enough to go do something about it, whatever that is. I don't care how big or small, really. And I know people may not want to be part of this crowd, but all you all don't know the first thing about what we're up, what we're up against. And I've said I, I'm more thinking about this from a couple weeks ago we're at least two steps behind from where we need to be as a people or a society. These things, I'm not, I don't care how many, the time is irrelevant at that point. It doesn't matter how long we've been deceived or duped or they're not doing, so they are not doing something we thought that they were supposed to do. We see it today and it's time to move. That in the news today, there was, I had another article before, I'll get to that in a second, relative to guns. And your right to bear and all that, which I think is a big joke. But, I mean, a long time ago I said, watch out. The people that are right to bear arms are just drunk on their right without knowing what the heck is going on. And they're going to shoot somebody without without real cause because they're, uh, they're in a stupor regarding this thing called uh, amended uh, the amendment to the Constitution rights. And no one really steps up quite right anyway. I said this back in 99 that you were uh, people were too drunk to do a dang thing about it. And so... In the few, in the, going from there, in the future, it, my attitude, my observations, my experience has not changed one little bit. We're staggering around as a people in a society that was handed something to keep, and I haven't seen how we've done that. When we tried, whatever the dynamic was, the people lost. And that has never ended. And I told you, be careful on getting focused on certain things, and I hear it coming right out of this article. It broke today. I had another article that I was going to talk about guns, and last week I didn't get to. And it breaks today that there's a dust-up that started, and luckily no one died here. But it's uh, become uh, almost a call to action a bit. And I've been saying all along that we should have been act, uh, moving in through and causing a response to the things that oppress us. This is relative to red flag laws. Now, I don't know where all y'all been. Relative to your Second Amendment, I see lots of yakking and talking and twittering and all this other nonsense. But no one puts together what they have to do to stop it. No one steps up locally to stop wherever they are. And my experience has been when you all do, you don't even know what you're talking about. And I say that with a particular experience I can bring. We had someone, a good guy, I'm sure. He wants to get the county to ratify the Second Amendment. He wants to make a proclamation. He wants to make a law, an ordinance. Doesn't realize he doesn't have to. Doesn't realize the thing of county concern in that regard is to not even touch it. So what's the point? Waste a lot of time within a, bo a governmental body that should have been focused on other things. As I've told you before, and we read in the court cases, and I bring them this way to explain to you, when you have rights that are interfered with, you don't have to wait around to go find some agency to, to determine it, to exhaust remedies. You can go directly to the court, but you don't go for money. You go to stop and join. 
an equity, an equity, action in equity to stop a right you have that's being interfered with, or I wrote anybody, that, any one or anybody, those are two different terms, one and, and body are two different terms, that they come against these rights. You have to assert that. The way this thing is wired is you have to assert any transgression against you. That's not a place of peace, and that's the very first problem I would always put in a document to say that I'm having, that this is a violation that I even have to do this. And where do I get that? Do I make this stuff up? No. I look at the land law. It's supposed to dispose the land for peaceful settlement. And the sheriff from which the, however you want to get at this, I don't care whether you go corporate or not, or government or du jour or de facto, the, 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 the breach to that peace is supposed to be actionable by the state in protection of you, through the sheriff, typically. We are so far away from that, it's astonishing. When you try to get a sheriff now to do that, they claim it's a civil case. When I can show you clearly it's not, when you understand what I've been telling you about converting uh, some color of authority into a wrongful, uh, unwarranted aggression or trespass against property. Those are felonies. Then you start seeing how they've dismantled the place you were supposed to keep. And then we get to stories like this, where because you let the Bar Association run with all their legislators that were either, either attorneys or not, even just political party members, which is the way this thing was wired, you never noticed that as well, it starts out this way. You never address to stop it, which I've been telling you is as simple as starting to make laws that you write to stop it, like we heard in Texas. No more income tax. Fascinating. Why haven't we been do why hasn't anybody been doing that? Why didn't I get a flood of emails? Wow, I never saw that. Thank you very much. I'm going out and I'm going to do that. No, we hear about the red flag laws. We hear about the aggression against the right to bear arms. We I told you they were coming after you because of a mental instability that they would blame you with. How many years ago, folks? This law comes up, and I hear crickets on everything. It just, I'm irritated now as I think about more about it. I didn't even read this story much except for I saw it today. And I'll read the title here so you can get it. And this is, again, I, Boogaloo Behind the Woodshed. I've been asking you to dust it up rightly behind the woodshed for a decade that I've been broadcasting and 10 years before that when I was writing. The Boogaloo Begins, Maybe, was a good title. On Saturday, November 23rd, 2019, if you don't think this current behind the woodshed, like I said, if I don't get to it when I get to the broadcast, it becomes the re regurgitated news by the end of the week. And I just can't get to it all. Head some of this stuff off. Hey, uh, November 23rd, 2019, an extremely volatile situation came and went, but not before garnering attention across the country. Alexander Booth is a 28-year-old Afghanistan war veteran. I read these words, it irritates me, folks, for y'all, and all of you that are veterans that don't stand up right, and I say that with experience. I'm not a veteran. I'm never going to be able to get anything from the government, uh, as far as I can tell, even the ones that were promised to me. But uh, you guys have a in law, and I don't see most anybody stepping up. And I know that because I've got a colleague that does. I've talked to you about it before we got here, this broadcast, that if you're a veteran and you're being uh, mistreated, you needed to step up, and there's ways to do it. And I come every week to tell you the methods. I don't care what subject matter you're going to find the wrong. You apply what I'm telling you. You at least get in the game to stop it because they're stealing this place from you and they're harming you by it. Anyway, so here's a veteran. He needs help. The veterans' the, the, uh, disabilities and the veterans' care and all that is actually, it sits there to be done correctly, as I, my colleague found out, and I'm only going through my colleague. The people on the ground in the counties can do this. But your state is interfering, and the, and the feds are allowing it. And none of you veterans step up to protect yourself. And here we have the ramifications, which then goes into something else, the red flag laws, which is going after your you, presuming you to be guilty, as I said, you watch the presumption of innocence destroyed, and saying that you're a danger to society, which is a police power concern. And how do you defeat that? You have to show that whole angle they're coming at you with is a fraud. It's an unwarranted attack by an imposition of something that's presumed or assumed and not actually even presumed and no due process to overcome the presumption. We've done all this before. Now my problem here is people get killed and thankfully no one got killed here. I'm looking right in the first paragraph of three or four things I've talked about that the society at large 
refuses to come by the woodshed to start putting on those that are supposed to be doing this better that obligation and duty and making accountability. I'm pausing here to make you think, did I or did I not talk about all this stuff before? And if you've been here listening to me at all, you know I have, and more, so much more. So we come today, and we got this guy, going to he's in trouble. He's got PTSD and all that kind of stuff that you get from going to war. Again, without getting into the fact that the wars were all made up, they use you as fodder. Where were you to stop that? Anyway, like I said, I'm all of a sudden irritated just by reading the beginning of this. These words want to be triggered. They trigger me. All these words are were signs that you had a bill a necessity to step up and go after whatever you're not a veteran then you should have been after the red flag laws if you're neither you should have went after the fact that these two classes of people don't have due process why because if they can do it to those two classes they can do it to you have i talked about anything different behind the woodshed no do i get lots of listeners no no one wants to hear this stuff why because it means you have to take responsibility do I know the absolute right way? Absolutely not. I've told you that, but at least I can get you on the right path. I know that. And I know that because of the subject matter we cover when I'm not broadcasting. And to the people that are doing that work on the other end, I'm just, my hat's off to them. And so I feel my part within the context of the, the journey that we're taking to bring this thing back so that none of us start, you know, we don't suffer what I see going on. You know, my mind starts to go off here about all the people I see on YouTube and stuff that are good-hearted, good people, doing actually doing stuff I'm saying, not that I'm saying it and they've heard it and that's what they're doing. What I'm saying is I agree um, with a couple like videos where people are bringing up the law immediately now. That's, that's critical in that first addressment, but then they go on and they start to get themselves back in trouble because they know they got the advantage. You don't want to do that, but that's what people go to. And then you get yourself into a place where you start you start thinking, boy, maybe I over I overspoke myself. My mouth over overloaded my constipation here. And you start and you know that. And anyway, so we don't we can't even get into that. We just need to stop it right now. We need to stop the aggression. We need to get at people out there to stop hurting people that are hurting in the veterans. They need help. There's a system that's supposed to bring them help. I've seen that it can work, but there's a lot of interlopers in the, trying to take from the system so that the the uh, management of the trust is is violated. Yet, if you went to read the black and white, it's all there laid out. You could straighten it out, and you can help educate people that are local to you that are trying to administer it. Those that are trying to administer it properly. I'm not saying that everybody local is good either, but I'm saying that you can find those people that are. People really are inside the system that want to do good. They're just there to do the, good, the job they thought they were there. They're not the administrators and bureau rats that are sucking off the system, taking other people's efforts and taking credit for that. That's what happened to my, bro, my uh, colleague uh, and what happened to him. It's funny how they do that. Luckily, he was in a, after meeting with the county, he was able to expose to someone who started taking credit what the actual point was. So you have to be in the game, you have to be in the fight, you have to be in the right, you have to be in the remedy that you're causing. And so, like I said, I'm irritated all of a sudden, just all of a sudden wells up in me after I really looked just a few words. Then I wasn't even going to go this direction, but I think I have to. I'm behind the woodshed. What am I supposed to do here to tell you all we're not cutting it as a society. People are getting hurt, and luckily no one got killed here. But now they're going to people, now you start seeing those of their followers of this are going to now maybe make an issue. They're going to be a boogaloo. I didn't even know what the heck that word was. Well, I went over and looked at it. So I'll just read the first sentence on the Urban Dictionary. Civil War. Oh, wow, folks. What have I said going on? What do they want us to do? Does not only pertain to the war with the government, but also to political sides. What have I said? Get it out of politics. And so the Urban Dictionary and the Urban Thought, the societal thought, is in the wrong direction to begin with. It is what it is, but that's the wrong direction. And I guess that irritates me some more. I guess at some point, folks, you, like I've been talking for so long and no one's listening. Not no one. I know. A handful of you. Not enough, folks. And I see this threat, this jeopardy come on people, and this is not going to be necessarily the way it's going to go right unless some people grab onto this and do the better thing. There's an opportunity as I look at it. You want to do a boogaloo? You want to do civil war? Or do you want to get involved and stop the civil war? Stop the war. Bring peace to around, around you. Bring peace to this uh, to this Afghan war veteran. 
bring peace to the uh, to the society against the military consequence that in, encroached in is is actually effic, efficated effic, yeah that's a bad word isn't it no it's the same similar thing sounding anyway is effectuated there's the word I was looking for I had to take a pause by the bar association through the justice just us system Okay, it's all it's all there to see and to con and the battlefield is there and is to understand and to work against. You don't go against this thing in some memetic boogaloo that I've been telling you you need to back off. But behind the woodshed, given that determination, if that's how you want to do it, I've been determined every week. There's a boogaloo behind the woodshed every week. If you just want to step up to it. That might head a lot of this stuff off. Let me get back to the story. Alexander Booth is a 28-year-old Afghanistan war veteran who barricaded himself in his home for seven hours while police surrounded it. He posted live during the standoff on Instagram. Fascinating technology here, folks. That's what I've been telling you about having access. But there you go. And here's what you needed. And here's how it works. He posted live during the standoff on Instagram where he claimed that the police were attempting to confiscate his weapons under New York's red flag law. The law allows the law allows authorities to confiscate guns from those who are reported to be threats to themselves or others. Booth claims people have accused him of having post-traumatic stress disorder and tipped off the police about his guns in questionable mental state. Okay, I told you all this was coming this way. Here it is. Anyway, like I said, most every sentence here is a triggering me folks we we needed to step up against and call this stuff out so it couldn't be used against you it's all really part of what i say is it make the record it can't be used and they have to get back to what the one thing i told you you may have well two things if you push it the presumption of innocence is the second thing actually that most people don't think about but uh, the first one is due process which is really just saying that because i'm presumed innocent you just can't run down run me down where do i hear any of that in this i don't i just hear this this response by the military, the, what you call the police. According to the local NBC outlet, their sources familiar with the story confirms he has PTSD. The police are reporting that they first arrived at Booth's residence in response to a domestic dispute not connected with his PTSD. Uh, again, every sentence here, how are the police knowing that's the fact? And if they knew that there was PTSD, Maybe that was a reason for any any uh, potential domestic dispute here. We hear no violence going on. He did. He didn't want dinner that night. He just wanted a snack. Okay. Anyway, he refused to meet with authorities and proceeded to barricade himself in what appears to be an addict. Now, when I talked about your right to the freedom from association. They have to have a lawful order here. That hasn't been determined. It's just law that has not been challenged, hasn't it? Which I've been asking you for months and months now, for someone over there to do it, anywhere. Can everywhere that this plane goes in, challenge this stuff. For what? What did I tell you? Do the lack of due process, at least, at least. Anyway, again, this sentence by sentence. You pick this stuff apart, folks, and I'm wondering where you all are. That's why I went to crickets uh, again. I mean, I told you what the condition was in this country called the United States of America and, and globally because of the, who the players are. And I get crickets. I just, I wonder why I do what I do here, folks. Really, really. Those of you that are listening and, and applying, uh, my hat's off to you. I'm not talking to all y'all. I'm not talking to any of you that tried and got beat up and have to lick your wounds a bit. This is a, it's, this is dangerous. I, I, I get that. I was there. I've been there. I'm still, we're all still there. We just don't really know it sometimes. I'm not talking about the people trying and found and have to learn and, go, and, and, and have a spirit to come back but don't know quite how either. I'm talking about all you all that think you know. Always talk the, the mimetic life. They want to talk about protecting yourself and are doing a zero about it. And I look at a story like this in every sentence is somebody has an in on every one of these sentences. Somebody different, but somebody has a way to jump in and say that part wasn't right for me or for them or whatever. And I'm not, again, not talking lawsuits, uh, actions for damages. I'm talking about equity. It's the reasonable man application. And I'm not affronting women. This is all man has to do with the generic application on mankind, including womankind. 
you know, those of you that are kind of triggered, don't don't go there for yourself. You're hurting yourself if you do that to my talk. So the reasonable mind of man. We're not talking about legal there. And so you move into what I say the collateral remedy, the collateral attack to this stuff. And it's a, if you go read the rules, if anybody would just go read the rules, you find out it's not a long, drawn-out process. They can drag it out, but if you know that that's what they're doing and they're, it's the perpetrator, you can use that against them too for dragging it out where they haven't showed a title to what they do or, the, or it's not a plausible excuse. In fact, I think it was uh, Vin E. sent me a link on you know, some uh, attorney in Colorado making a, you know, trying to give the Colorado River a, a personhood. And the state of Colorado came back, uh, even uh, surprising, actually, came back and said, we're going to sanction you if you keep up that frivolous argument. The bottom line of that is a river has, in, uh, in the United States of America's legal, legal system even, or in the law system, has no standing. And so if you don't think I'm talking about these words standing and jurisdiction and personam and jurisdiction and all this, if you think that those things are frivolous or you don't need to listen to them or you don't understand them, you miss, you're missing what I'm talking about here on how your first step forward to stop this nonsense. Now, personhood. Well, what's that? Well, that's somebody subject to a set of laws. That could be good or bad. That's a neutral thing. Most of the time it's bad. Why? Because none of us, uh, none of us have stepped up in the proper way to out those who would impose it as a crime. That would impose it over our presumption of innocence, as I went through back last week. And I hope some of you are really paying attention to this information. I know if you're clueless, you don't understand what I'm saying. You don't have a clue what I'm actually talking about. If you almost, if you're kind of out of cluelessness, if you think you're woke, you may hear a little bit of what, I, what I'm saying. But you're so many steps behind yet that I have to come and talk to this. It tells you there's a should indicate there's a real problem in this country. On such a simple condition. Just breaking now. We're going to get into this big civil war, Boogaloo, because of this. Which is, we need to, actually. But not in the way. We had a way, many things we needed to do before in order to make the record that the people will not get remedy. I mean, that can happen really fast. The police are reporting that they first arrived at Booth's residence in response to this domestic dispute. Not connected to his PTSD. Like they're doctors. He refused to meet with the authorities and proceeded to barricade himself to what appears to be an odd attic. I'll interject. I don't hear anything about the lawfulness of their ability to be there, actually. Remember, now they're working in community care even so, and I've told you you needed to attack that. You don't hear none of this stuff in this article, but this is what's working underneath the, underneath the skin of all this. While wearing military fatigues and tactical vests and sipping what he claims to be whiskey, he ranted about his distrust of police authority. Booth? is known as Whiskey Warrior 556 on Instagram and is an adv avid gun advocate. And I just, when I read that, I was shaking my head. And I didn't have time when I saw that to go pull up the, um, I don't know what you call it. It was a writing that I authored back in 1999. And I talked about the drunk, vociferous drunk defending their Second Amendment rights. If I, I don't know, folks, what to say. I'm, I'm speechless at my own observation, my own awareness. Yet our first example that boogaloo is, you won't do it every week when I come behind the woodshed and take it during the week. No, you're going to wait till something like this, on something that sounds like someone needs help, instead of attacking those that won't help them when the system is there, instead of attacking what they're attacking for lack of due process, if they have the right to impose the red flag, excuses hearsay on people who have no clue. Excepting the police can say that it wasn't due to the PTSD. I don't know how they figured that out, folks. Where was the court case that determined that for them? Especially the AQ ID minus soldier. Well, we're handing a whole lot to these people as law, as authority. It doesn't even it doesn't even meet it doesn't even meet presumption here. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off here. I can tell it. Here it comes. During the standoff, he continually referred to the injustice of New York's restrictive gun laws and his concern that they would treat him unconstitutionally if he surrendered. Where is all you all that talk about the prison system being for profit and now the evidence we can have from the UK that says that the United States prison system is inhumane? Why haven't you been fighting that ahead of this? 
Here it is. This guy's giving you the things. What what this this article kind of denounces in him is provable by anybody that's better off than being the whiskey warrior, not doing that, and nor doing what I'm saying and how to step forward to do it more correctly. And this is the guy that's leading you all as well. Boy, I, like I said, I'm getting irritated again real fast. This is, again, you guys, you, all you folks are in trouble. And I guess that's what drives me. There's no reason for it at the one hand. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be no, no fatalities in something like this, but you don't understand the war you're in. You're not responding correctly. And someone that has to be, has to step forward is called the whiskey warrior wasn't met before that without the whiskey and defend this condition for it. So he wouldn't be the, the poster child. No, disre no disrespect to uh, Mr. Booth. He may not have been drunk. Okay? The point is that this is the, this is the story that hits everybody uh, in the face by the media that doesn't have to be. That he could have done a lot different. That someone around him could have done a lot different. And people before him had the opportunity to do and take out because of the nature of the lack of due process and the uh, type of information characterization, and I call it mischaracterization, the fraudulent characterization that the government goes to in order to get their way. They bring it into that police power imperative, what we would also know on the national level at the foreign side as national security. It's the same authority. And I told you years ago it was coming this way. You're going to have to defeat that too. And I've explained what I thought and think and still think would be your best approach first. Until someone else steps up or other people step up to show the error in what I'm saying, I'm going to stick with what I know. I'm going to stick to my intuition. I'm going to stick to the voice that speaks to me. I'm going to stick to the insights I've had, my experience, better than anybody else. If I can predict, the Second Amendment authority would be too drunk on their rights. And I see this story, Whiskey Warrior. I don't know what else to tell you, folks. This was obvious since two decades ago. This is before 9-11 now, you have to understand. And I hear crickets. Oh, boy, am I irritated. I don't know why. I don't know why. I care about you all more than I know, I guess. And I care about you even though I don't know you. And I look in the world and some of you aren't even worth it. I don't look, no, how do you do, folks do what you do? Not care what you not care and whatever. I don't know. Make the excuses you do anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I just sit behind the woodshed, I guess. That's all, all I do. So he continued to refer to injustice in New York's restrictive gun laws. If you can't find the injustice and be a voice that's not drunk or not uh, underneath the taint of being drunk, and you haven't been speaking, I don't know about you. That you had to let this guy come out and be threatened? This guy could have been killed here. And I don't know. I don't know how he's not. Apparently, Instagram helped out the public exposure. So that's another observation. Public, the public, the people, in knowledge, can be powerful. Do they do justice here? No, but at least we got to see this. And for me, the Boogaloo statement is an interesting problem. Will you take action that's not to the point of the Civil War, work inside the enemy lines as we've heard before, not as a scout, but as an active saboteur of the war and an invasion and occupation against you, will you step up? Will you help? Oh, the whiskey warrior, drunk or not? Uh, the libertarian, as I guess this Boogaloo comes from libertarian uh, view. You, you say, really? Really? I, I have to say really lots of times here. Uh, Grimner on uh, Freakers Ball, the double really. No, I, I got a quad really. I got a, Big lots of really, really, really is going on here. Do you really think that's going to do something? The libertine mind says it's time to boogaloo. Really? Well, let's read that. So it's not just my opinion. My opinion. Police are blaming his Instagram followers for antagonizing him to keep the standoff going. I don't know whether they did that or not. I don't know their reasoning. But they're going to blame you. And this is the whole problem with all this. You got to be careful on how you do this, and that's okay. The Instagram people were catching the witness, weren't they? And if they knew to say that, they could counter this pretty quickly. Well, how would you do that? 
he'd go find out how the New York the restrictive gun law is unconstitutional, not just make the assertion. You challenge how the justice system itself is corrupt. You would show how this uh, lack, this mischaracterization is hearsay. You'd identify all these things for you, for him, and anybody in the same capacity. You wouldn't let this mischaracterization apply to him against your rights, is what you don't may not understand here. Booth exited the residence at 9 p.m. Eastern Time without incident. I'll tell you, I took a big sigh of relief right there as I'm reading through this stuff. Right. I don't know what, why. I would have figured they were talking about it and we didn't see that he died. Just knowing the brutality that the government has become because no one steps up to check it always keeps that thing in me that someone's going to get hurt. And for years I've been asking you, don't approach it that way. Anyway, going on. Nothing yet is to be confirmed, but his followers believe Boogaloo has begun and Whiskey Warrior is leading it. Again, my reference to the vociferous Second Amendment advocate being too drunk to understand how to do this back in 1999 is a accomplished today in this report as a media assertion to try and invoke the wrong response from a bunch of people who work through that term and don't have a clue. Oh, you have the spirit, you have the want, and you know you have the need because we don't have it. But you don't have the clue how that's going to happen. And your mind goes to antagonism or lack of lock, lack of peace instead of doing the things I've been saying. Are we going to go there? We might have to go there. Did we go there once before? Yeah. How we turn out? Eh, maybe not so well. And we're still there, but we're not so well. And so we're going to need a whole lot more than a small group of followers. His followers. Who is this guy, a cult member? You get into his predicament and don't look at the entirety of the problem that got him there. As I've described as I went through each sentence. Where have you all been that you wait till now it's on? And you think that's going to be the answer. Some of you might be, that be your answer. For you, the last answer you ever do. I don't know what your plans are on that. Essentially, I'm talking about a behind a Boogaloo behind the woodshed every week. It's on, folks. I'm suggesting you can do it. You need to be a whole lot more knowledgeable, not just about that, but how to apply it, how to be in their face in ways that they don't set you up like this, and then don't run the agenda that we all know is happening. By legislators that could care less about you, political party affiliations that are driving this country out and into an international position. I hear y'all talking about it. I see none of you doing anything actually about it. And then when I see you going to do something, you do this. The boogaloo has begun. No, it hasn't. And the boogaloo that's the talking about here is, in my estimation, and over my observation over decades, will be the wrong way to go do it, which will hasten exactly what they're attempting to get going on here. Did this happen against the guy? Absolutely. Is he being violated? Absolutely. Is he suffering PTSD? I don't know. Hearsay says he is. Does he need help? Yeah, but there's a program there that's been violated against him so that they don't do it correct. How do I know all that? Because I got people that are in the in that in that uh, subject matter that I help. Anyway, so I'm again, I'm feeling just so irritated. I don't even know. I wasn't that irritated when I started, but uh, here we are today. Anyway, that came that story came on right before the broadcast. Didn't have time to touch it base, and that's why I guess I'm irritated because I've, in it is another list of things that identify we're in a bad way, we're doing handling it the wrong way, people are gonna get hurt, and yet it's all defeatable ahead of the time. If we would just pay attention. Stop thinking that we know so much. Stop waxing eloquent about the propriety of the Second Amendment and actually stop those that are interfering with it. And I don't know what more to say about it. At some point, see, that's a thing in the future that that depends on us taking care of it that I I don't have an insight to. How does it go? 
the evidence we have, the Civil War didn't go good against the people. It was against people that wanted to be independent and free and not associate with another. I don't know if you appreciate that part. The freedom of association was destroyed, essentially, when the South was forced to be, maintain the more perfect union. Yeah, I, I'm thinking here. I, I, I almost hear the noise. <laughs> maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm making it up. Yeah, I guess there's that way to go back out and do that because we can do this. We know now. I've also told you there's something about a higher, if I can say, spiritual addressment of our future as a people. That if we have to take two steps down in order to accomplish what we should have never let go, we're not doing ourselves any favor. We're not bringing the accountability that needs to be in there now. We're allowing those that will take under the color of governmental authority, forgetting that the people generally are the sovereign, without obfuscating what that thing is, though, twisting and contorting, and no, you're not the sovereign citizen. Don't stop all that nonsense. It has to do with the political power here. And if the political power now is Boogaloo, when in fact, because they said this is not against government, but within the government on political matters, I've said don't make your rights political. None of them are. Why would you opt to do that? Why don't we have a better thought in our brain than to do that? Why do we need this as a trigger? <laughs> Everybody gets triggered, folks. <laughs> you just, they're just as much extreme left as, 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 as they are. Come on. But why would you trigger on that and not have listened and be read up, even if you didn't hear what I have to say? Why aren't you all read up with the uh, knowledge enough to know what to do when someone comes as an affront against even the most the enumerated rights, which are supposed to be a whole lot more underneath that Constitution. Now, I've found that they are, but you got to do a lot more research and reading. Things that we're not told in school, things that they're not going to tell you in school, things that an occupier won't let you know, things that you'll de they'll deny, the occupier will deny to you. What if I told you about the Bar Association doing a court case and have the have the cop who stopped the guy to write the ticket uh, testify that the one he wrote the ticket against was a man, and the bar association member in a robe, the costume of a robe, says, oh, if I allowed that bar uh, that a testimony in the record from the cop, the executive branch, uh, into the court record, I, we couldn't prosecute anybody. It should have kind of set alarm bells in your head that this thing ain't wired like you thought, and we're going to have to approach this a little bit differently, and it's approachable is the main thing. Anyway, so getting trying to get past my my irritation as I feel it here. What can you do? What happens? Well, one of the things we move along, and a lot of people will dismiss this, but this is the thing I'm trying to talk to you about. One of the avenues is to expose it into the public by going through a collateral attack against a law, which is not law when it's when it you know it's presumed law. You have to throw it down, which is what, it's inverted problem here. But that's another thing we don't do. You you go and you attack it in the court. Now, whether or not this court case exactly was uh, the way I would have done it myself, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was a victory against the imposition of uh, laws against the Second Amendment. Why do I see that uh, it doesn't become boogaloo? It doesn't rise to the level that the whiskey warrior steps up to become the poster child of how not to do it right, but that you'll wait too long and you still won't address the problem. You have no clue on how to address it. I just know that you have none of you have the clue to how to address any one of the sentences I broke down in the last, uh, what, 40 minutes. I tell you, I brought it some answers, but do you know that ahead of time? Likely not. And if you are, I need to know about you because you're another ally that we could probably get together. Most of those people don't work uh, well uh, with me because uh, maybe they don't really exist. They think they exist and they don't. It's funny, the people that work with me, we work really, really well together. We accomplish things. So those that won't work with me or even touch base with me as we can work between us to advocate certain aspects is an interesting observation from my perspective. Where are y'all? Now, the, what I'm talking about right there is a, if I could say, more public addressment of things, like the entirety of the wrongful implementation at the local county level of the Veterans Affairs Services. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about in that regard. Not those of you uh, that have private things that you want to get done. Uh, that's still similar, but it's it's addressed privately. So we have. I'm always working on two levels relative to how we address it, and they're, they're, you approach each one different. This, with the red flag, is a general, more comprehensive approach. I think 
uh, even if you have people that know about it and knew what I'm saying, uh, understood what I'm saying, whether or not you agree or you could work, we could work, or you could work out maybe more I'm defective in what I think and fix those things, I still think it would take more than one of you to do a lot of this. And so we're so far behind the game, this boogaloo, this you want know, the civil war now over this cause caused by the whiskey warrior poster child is almost shocking to me. Uh, uh, predicting it is shocking somehow. And yet there's answers like this. Breaking, and this doesn't, again, these are tabs I've had on my, on my board. I never get to them. This week we'll get to this one. Breaking. Court blocks Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's gun control scheme in lawsuit brought by the FPC, FPF, FOAC. It's an effing network here. All righty. Effing site is back up too, folks. So if you go to freedomnetwork.com, it's back up. So those of you that want to participate in a little bitty social networking scheme, there it's over there and up again. Glad to see it. Don't know what to do much more about it, but there it is. Some, some more, it's more app, uh, more places for us to go. But uh, so here we have it. The court blocks Pittsburgh uh, control uh, gun control scheme. Okay, so it took these organizations to pull together. Where are you all, folks, to go against every sentence wrong I pointed out in the first story? That that guy had to go to where that was. They denounced your very objection to the, the government does wrong. See, because they've put it in everyone's mind that the government does no wrong. Because you don't actually fight these things. The opinion on this, an order issued by Judge Joseph M. James holding that ordinances 218 to, uh, 218, 2018 to 1218, 2018 to 1219, and to 1220 are void and unenforceable. You get the link on this. And then you get the people talking about how delighted they are the decision. That shouldn't have even been a delight. It shouldn't have been a law. But we all hear that we are giving homage to the judge's decision that shouldn't have been because it shouldn't have been a case that is in my problem. Why do I say that? Because there is supposed to be checks and balances. And when you have to go to the judiciary to check something legislators were never supposed to do, we have a problem. Because that means that the legis the, legis uh, the judiciary is not actually checking in the first instance. It's only waiting for you to come and complain. And then you have to do it just right. And then you have to be happy that they fall decided in your favor. Pennsylvania's preemption statute serves as an important purpose to ensure that Pennsylvanians are not subjected to the patchwork of illogical and inconsistent rules and regulating pertaining to the firearms they chose to employ. What about just your arms? Do we have to always talk about a firearm, which is a federally regulated device? What about, and this is the thing where the 3D guns come in, and the ghost guns, they want to make this title on them that makes them most spooky. In fact, that's your right to be able to acquire, and the right to have, and to keep, and bear, and yet I don't see anybody, well, it's the First Amendment right to have a file. No. You have the right, like a mining claim, you have the right to acquire. You have the right to possess. You have the right to acquire more. And nobody can say anything under that absolutely open grant. You think the Second Amendment has any other restrictions and you get to keep and bear and that shall not be infringed? If not, then why am I hearing about this nonsense that we owe where the preemption statute serves an important purpose to ensure Pennsylvanians are not subject to the patchwork of illogical incons inconsistent rules? There is no supposed to be no regulation unless it's a federally commercial property called a firearm. What about the arms that you're supposed to keep? Does it say firearms in the Second Amendment? Okay, anyway, I go off and, I mean, there's always places, I'm not talking about stuff I could talk about. If we were in a dialogue, we'd go so many other places, it would take us hours, we could talk for hours and hours and hours, and I have in the past. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Don't do that too much anymore. Oh, and nobody contacts me, so it's not really something that everybody's interested in, because you know what I'm saying here. He said, I'm working with people that we go do stuff. If you don't want to talk to me, if you're going to talk to me, you know I'm going to probably try and uh, say, what are we doing with that? Are we just wasting our breath here, or are we going to go do something with it? And so I don't get many people contacting me. 
uh, that I would think have the power, uh, really the insight, better. I mean, I see people with insight better than mine that really don't go in the right, in, well, I can't say right, in the direction that would be doing these kinds of things up front. No, we got to wait for these organizations to do it, well, even though the people have, have the right. And so you see, even so, let me put in, it takes an organization. These were associations of people that came together. Uh, again, they had to use the attorneys to do it. Couldn't use a 15-day process of of, a st- of uh, injunction. No, we can't figure that easy one out. Again, so many steps behind where we need to be. Uh, so what can you do to stop this uh, the gun confiscation stuff? You have to do what I've been saying, and we have evidence that that can be possible. And we don't have to get to the point where uh, we have a small faction of group that's being tainted by a mischaracterization and forms a... Uh, we now can say the boogaloo is on. And I look at these groups of people and say, you're clueless. This is just another mimetic response. Because if you actually wanted to be on, you'd have, you'd have seen the evidence already. We wouldn't be crickets as a society. And if you don't think so, listen to my broadcast every week for a few weeks. Some of you that do, you start seeing there's a, there's repeating information that you get, you get to go study what I'm saying, you start to say, oh, yeah, the guy behind which that makes some sense. Oh yeah, it's a lot to know, a lot to do, but yeah, there's some sense there. And let's take those few two cents worth, and let's apply them to my two cents worth, and we might have four cents. We're still working on a nickel, but at least we got four cents. So, uh, again, this PA control scheme overthrow unlawful, unconstitutional, void, folks, up front, void, I, I, I don't know if you've anybody picked up on that. Void. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. Really big deal. Four letters. Big deal. Why that came to the courts, I don't even know. Why it was having to be brought to the courts, I don't even know. Why the people had to suffer that to go to the courts, I don't know. That's an attack on the people up front. Okay, move on. I'm going to move on here. I'm kind of irritated now. It's kind of caught my mind. So let me move on to certain. Uh, bother me a little bit. I've always wondered about the food that they feed us and the feed they feed our pets. And we don't know. And uh, so I'm always wondering about, because I see so many kitties and dogs on the Internet. Everyone's so uh, thinking they're so cute, which they, they can be, and they are. And I guess they have their purpose and things like that. So they're like dogs are kind of captive prisoners. They're almost a reflection of us in our own society, if you will. Kind of take a look at that. Should dogs eat pea and lentil proteins uh, is one of those things where if you're a captive audience and you only get what you're fed, bologna sandwiches and water, uh, that may or may not be sufficient. And you are subject to your captor. And uh, so I put it this way because the, we, the captor, it could be doing all the best and it's maybe not good enough. And this seems to be a, a I don't get too much into all this stuff sometimes to talk to you about because, I mean, this is just more information. But uh, it seemed important. I wanted to bring this because it also allows me to move from uh, lentils to someplace else in the world. But uh, uh, plants protein for dogs. It's contrary to prevailing rumor, dogs are well documented to be able to digest grains whether grains are optimal for dogs is another matter, and I wish, as this author says, I wish uh, we had some decent research on the question. And here we have the continuing thing on everybody's, uh, either, whether, pelt, whether feed or food, we have this ongoing problem of uh, research and the type of research, and is it valid? And then, again, I'm not going to get into that part. This is a danger against your dogs. May or may not be, I guess I should say. Didn't even understand it. It just came through, and I go, well, that's interesting. So here, we're relying on this stuff. If those of you that have the dogs and cats, you rely on these uh, pet food makers to be saying some things you believe in organic and holistic and all this other stuff. And you look at the bottom line is it may not be such a good thing for your pets. In this case, be careful of the pea and lentil proteins instead of others that are put in instead of the grains. Uh, what we, uh, the state of the article, but what we do uh, have is a pet food Makers scrambling to sell pet foods to owners convinced that grains are bad for the dogs. These products are often made with proteins extracted from peas and lentils. The FDA, FDA has gotten reports that the dogs fed such pet foods have developed a form of heart disease called canine dilated cardiomyopathy. I'll end right there. You get this link. They've got the, you can go to the document. Big old list of documents on dog food. What it, the boil, this thing boils down to this. The dogs apparently need um, amino acid 
named Turin, T-U-R-I-N-E. What I've found in extensive research, they also need quinithin also. But anyway, uh, they don't get enough of this in their diet. And so a captive prisoner are not getting enough, they're going to have these defects. And you don't know it. This thing, heart, this uh, cardiomyopathy comes onto the dog and it's, uh, it, you don't even, it, over time, you, you end up kill, killing, your, killing your dog. So again, these secret silent uh, killers that are going on, we think we put our faith in these companies. And I'm not saying any of them are doing bad, but I'm saying if you look on a bag and you find out that uh, these nutrients that are, they say are non-essential are actually essential. Uh, and they're only getting 20% per serving. That means that to get the raw proper amount, they have to have five servings. That's not adequate. At any rate, so serious uh, problem here. Uh, I know the cats have another thing. Male cats have something. I can't remember now what it was. Have it during with the urinary tract, renal failure or something. Uh, at, oh, too much ash, I think, is in the food. Uh, but uh, so we, we rely on the government, the, excuse me, well, the government's doing a check here, but we rely on the companies to provide for us, and we think that when they say wholesome things and we get into locked into certain ideas and without research, we can, we, in our, in our best interest, cause trouble. And this is, I guess, what a, maybe another underlying theme. In our best interest to help protect a veteran, uh, we call for boogaloo through a libertine mind. It, it's on when, in fact, if you were a libertine mind, you would have been fighting against the whole concepting of how it even got to that point. And now we respond after the fact from a diminished state. Like you, I've said, you, now you're dealing with your pet that has cardiomyopathy. You're not, you're not open to a lot of suggestions and fix the problem, which are typically not cheap as well. And so we set this up against ourselves. Uh, anyway, I don't know why this, uh, this one stopped. It always surprises me. I guess in, the, in my life here, I'm coming... How the government sets up RDAs, we know, for, for food, are so far less than what we actually need for the optimum health. And then you look at what it takes to have optimum health by experience or practice or research, and you wonder, how can I get that kind of food? We're in such a diminished capacity that we are kept in a prison in the same state as we keep our dogs and cats as captive to us. Now, the cats seem to be able to get out of ways. And so if they're not confined indoors, they can go get some other things, not so much for, for dogs. Anyway, any rate, so uh, this captured my mind. Be careful of the peas and lentils. Uh, uh, well, we see this also in the Impossible Burger. It's soy extracted proteins or can hurt you. And that's not found out by the FDA. The, uh, they don't give their under their seal of approval, but the, gov the company kind of runs with it, as I reported behind the woodshed a while back, uh, with the regard to that protein. So anyway, kind of off the track here of the originating part of this, the boogaloo and get it, let's get in their face, it's on. Well, you're going to have these things happen. I was struck by the fact that we can listen to everybody saying they're making good food for us and feed for us for our pets. And it's not. It doesn't meet up to stuff. So how we have to take that responsibility, these people these people aren't. Now, one other thing that I've noticed uh, and what leads me on to this, um, the, the lintil Lintel problem uh, potentially is what it might do to people and cause harm. It was over it caused my mind to think about it. Israel settlement products uh, must be labeled uh, as coming from occupied lands. Uh, a monstrous decision out of the United EU, EU courts that I didn't see many people respond to. But I, boy, this was a uh, sung to me a whole lot. If you hear what I've said about the about how to address the Middle East relative to land law and how quickly the people would have to come up with their their actual right and title, not as some belief, but in fact, that we could go quickly and solve a lot of this thing, and there wouldn't be the kind of uh, problems we have there. But uh, this is a, a European Union court. And again, I mean, this is another court that has a questionable. But the point is they, they, they acknowledge the truth. Any produce made in Israel-occupied West Bank settlements must be labeled as such so the European consumer isn't misled by generic Made in Israel tag, a top EU court said in a landmark ruling. The European Union member states must now mark products originating from Israeli settlements, the European Court of Justice ruled on Tuesday. This is a couple weeks back, I think. Now, some labels are to help consumers make informed choices relating to some ethical considerations, the ruling read. The reason is that simply indicating that the produce is made in Israel, as is usually done, could be misleading because, in fact, it comes from an occupied territory. 
labeling settlement products will now state explicitly that the Jewish state, quote, is present in territories concerned as an occupying power and is not as a sovereign entity, period, close quote. Can I repeat that? It's present in the territories concerned as an occupying power and not as a sovereign entity. I don't know what to say. I want to say, but I, you know, it, it gets all twisted. I had a, I'll just say, I had a smile on this one. Why? Because it says the truth. Because there's an underlying thing that never happened that needs to happen. To do, to do what? To bring p actual peace. That's the opposite of which is fostered and encouraged, encouraged by these psychological attacks on people who may have a cause to defend themselves and aren't allowed the proper uh, opportunity, like the whiskey warrior. Uh, okay, I, I go silent because this one is really, to me, a big deal. That statement is a big statement. Did they have to say go there? No, they didn't, but they did. Right? So this is the truth. On their products. I don't know how they're even being allowed in through the EU as a product, produce creating proper um, uh, country here when they're not a sovereign entity uh, and, and is an occupying force that do war crimes. I don't understand that part, how that continues. But now proper labeling because of what? Your, your right to an ethical consideration. was an interesting interpretation for me to see again we have your rights are sitting right there you have the right in your own governments inside your place to understand whether you're an occupied power whether there's a sovereign entity or not i'm not talking about their air uh, the the costume i'm talking about the reality it's your actually your duty and obligation to figure that out and make the and challenge that that that's where you get that fraud the frauds uh, excuse me the felonies up front when you've really understand what I've been telling you about the actual power coming against you, whether or not it's legitimate or not. But, uh, well, again, the territories occupied by so-called Jewish state are an occupying power, but not as a sovereign entity. And yet I want you to look in the world and see what kind of sovereign power it has been allowed by those not able to extend it to that. And when you see that fraud, you'll realize largely why we have the problems we do around the world. It's the same old, it's the same thing. It takes someone to call out the truth. Now, you definitely know that that caused an uproar with Israel. And the United States turns around. You can see who, you, who the camaraderie is about. Uh, Pompeo issues a historic policy reversal. Israeli West Bank settlements not illegal. Uh, again, I'll just read the title. We'll move on. I want you to ask yourself, what do the United States government have to determine what's not illegal and what is on someone else's land? Is the same problem of being the war criminal and in invading other lands and stealing their resources. Is the same mentality and uh, pseudo-authority, psychopathy that comes to say this in violation of all international law. And we've identified international law as being the national, international norms of how you deal with uh, situations over time and how in, in their best attribution is a, a way for countries to deal with themselves. So this is the response immediately was to back up the fact that these uh, settlements are not illegal, but the United States has no, no authority to determine anything in that regard. And I say, if they're doing it over there, they're doing it to you. In other words, if you look at the federal courts, the, the territorial courts in most other most states by USC 20, 28 USC what 81 to 132, most of the USDC courts are territorial courts, legislative courts. They then claim uh, the state authority. Are you kidding me? And you let them? At any rate, so, I mean, we can go through this pretty quickly. It's all the same. It's a mirror. I told you there's a carnival mirror going on. Whatever's happening in the Middle East is happening to you in the States. And I hear crickets against all of it. Uh, Jordan comes up right after that decision and says, U.S. settlement decision is entrenching occupation. Well, who's Jordan? But that little pipsqueak of a kingdom. 
that's also working as an ally with the United States, seeing that there's a problem now. We have to now step up for what is. Otherwise, if we don't step up for the land rights and what's going on there and the theft of the West Bank as well, our land could be under threat. But here's the line. Here's the, the fine line. And just a couple of days later, Jordan foils plot against U.S. Israel diplomats and U.S. troops. Now, that's an admirable thing, if you will, in the admiralty. That's a, a neat thing that they would protect the troops. But if you know, Jordan is working with those people to undermine Syria. And so you start to see, as I look at this, the duality between what's happening, the land law over there, and what that means when when Pompeo said that they're not illegal and that's not true, and Israel's claim of that they want to be interpreted as a sovereign there as well on these lands, and that's not true, starts to develop a whole different thought again on how this thing, the underpinnings of the Middle East are really constructed. That I think if you apply the principles and turn them around to the United States of America, you see they're undermined here already. And those things that are undermined are what you're going to bring back if you want to keep the republic, so to call. Uh, Jordan fails the plot against U.S. and Israeli diplomats and U.S. troops. Jordanian intelligence has said it foiled a plot by two people to mount attacks against American and Israeli plot diplomats against the, uh, alongside United States troops deployed to military base in the south of the country. Now, this is not new news. The government's been in the, the United States has been in there. This is another ally, another cabal, another uh, whatever coalition uh, against uh, Syria. But th when you read this story, you start finding out Jordan's trying to become relevant. You know, I don't know if you've noticed, it, it's been quiet about its relevance anymore. That caused me trouble because what's going on, I was thinking what's going on in there. But at any rate, they're, they're trying to bring themselves, the Jordanian intelligence trying to bring relevance to their organization. So they're politically motivated, if you will, about showing what all they did for the United States of America in support of Israel, which is a occupier and not a sovereign entity, although the players tout it as the opposite. When I look at the thing like the UN, and I don't mean it from the standpoint of sustainable development, all that nonsense, I'm talking about the way in the League of Nations was I did, not as a negative, but as a, the nations have a place to go to, to to arbitrate their problems amongst each other before it goes to war, before it causes strife, now, we all know that was a tool now created to be able to cause all that. I'll remind you of the Republic of Congo and how the UN went there to make so-called peace and then the United States uh, invades, or the Britain invades, uh, to d destroy a republic modeling itself after the United States, not realizing the United States doesn't exist as a republic because the people didn't keep that. No, today we have veterans that are being attacked and, and vilified underneath hearsay against the only thing that's protecting, that keeps the people from being uh, attacked more uh, more obviously. Like every other country in this world understands once they give up their guns. And, I, and I'm saying here at the night, 1999, you can't use your guns right now. That's not going to answer this thing. You don't even know what you're doing. You're like, you're stumbling around like some drunk. But in 2019, some whiskey warrior now steps up. I'm stunned, folks. So, this, all this Jordanian, all this, uh, I want to make myself relevant. Uh, we're going to support a non-sovereign entity that's plopped itself down by the United States and Britain through the Balfour Agreement, which was not intended that way and, and just used as a construct to move it through. People invading a land that they may or may not have right to, as I've explained how we can get through that pretty quickly, uh, from a people also. And I wonder, I saw something come through that, they're blaming, someone said, I uh, can't remember who it was, he said, well, if uh, the Nazis had Twitter, they would be, you know, condemning the, the Jews. And I, I looked at that and said, but the Jews are, I saw a newspaper report, unless it was photoshopped, but I think it was an actual copy of an old paper where the Jews declared war on Germany. And out of it, they get this thing, they get to go invade someone else's land. That the EU steps up and says, your produce that you're sending into the EU has attachment to it that people have to have cognizance and disclosure about for their ethical considerations. That you are not a sovereign entity and you are just an occupier. Is the kind of thing I'm saying for you to do locally, wherever you are, you don't care what, what nation you're in, 
but the United States in particular, because I understand that a little better, that's the kind of thing I'm saying. Identify the facts. Don't put your opinion. Lay out the very short, uh, short sentences that create the, the facts that you can rely on, and then call that out, however it looks like, relative to authority or power or, or whatever, whoever is the costume before you. Always with an acknowledgement, there could be a power there that has to be recognized. And the problem with that's where the problem of the national security or police power is. Are they extending? Are they misapplying that? Or are they coming under the pretense or pretext? And it doesn't actually exist. And this is where we get to why, uh, what, what, what about the Middle East? How all the players are Saudi Arabia, 911. I'm not going to get into all that except that what that created, I told you we talked about this with the Patriot Act. No one, uh, no one said anything. Uh, we did the NDAA, the 20, what, uh, 2010. They, they told you that you're going to be, a, whisked away in definite detention, and I went to crickets in 2012 when that report finally hit, and I explained it to you. Nobody responds. On and on and on. We come up to the day. All of this stuff, all of this wrongful control effectuates itself to where we now have mischaracterization of people as a presumption without an administrative remedy, remedy that I'm talking to you. The courts actually do acknowledge but you're going to have to come at it in a particular way that we now get to this report. DHS expects to have the biometrics data of 259 million people by 2022. Now, 259 million kind of caught me. I didn't realize the population of the United States is that much. So they must be talking about globally as well, some people. The point is DHS is now the king, if you will, uh, uh, since 9-11 relative to that Patriot Act and the things and institutions have been put up. The United States Department of Homeland Security expects to have face, fingerprint, and iris scans of at least 259 million people in its biometrics database by 2022. Is there any way to escape the mass surveillance and tracking that George Orwell warned us about in the iconic book 1984? Well, is there, folks? And this is going to be the problem. Have you been listening behind the woodshed that says that you have to bring them behind the woodshed? Not me bringing you, although today maybe is a little bit of that. It's my irritation to all the mouthing off that goes on and not actual knowledge. I, can, I know there's no knowledge to back up even the mouthing off if, if you were in earnest to go do the boogaloo, a new dance. But this is now warning or telling you that by 2022, 259 million, I don't know where these 259 people, million people are going to come from, but they're going to have all your face, fingerprint, and iris scans, and I don't have it. I talked about it before. It may come up later. I don't know if I'm going to get there. Remember, the military was responding in this, this. They had this whole system set up. The military did globally. Remember that story? That this brought up the other thought of 2022, everything biometrics. Remember, the uh, real ID waivers come to an end. All of you that have been making excuses and not doing anything against the real ID is the place and database, of, uh, the central point where they collect all this stuff. And if you haven't figured out a way to avoid, like the question is made here, I've been telling you how to start m making steps so that you can avoid it. How many of you stepped up? I know lots of you want to, but how many have stepped up? It's not going to be an easy road when you're up against this national security stuff, I can tell you. But what do you want to do? You want to keep complaining and have them come and take your guns through some diversion? You want the small group of followers to the Whiskey Warrior to step up and cause the bad example? Or do you want to start doing this thing correctly and you become the evidence and example that you can so-called escape? How about if it doesn't apply? How about if we stop the escape nonsense like it's inevitable? Do I have this answer like I said it's, poss it, it's, it's a guarantee? No, because you're living in occupied territory. Do I have a possibility if I have a view and a pathway to be able to stay out of the necessity that they're forcing? Do you think maybe that's a way to avoid without a fight, without escape? You, you have to say yes. I mean, if you don't know that the answer is yes, then you haven't. You don't listen to me. And you're not really thinking, and you're probably somebody who just gets behind the next mem memetic that's presented in your in your face. Which I don't find out. Someone said there were a war thing. I guess they could be defined. Yeah, they could be. But when you, someone like myself, look at most of this, I say people are just, yeah, there's a truism. Yeah, you could go that way. But what's the underlying point being made? It has no concept of the actual thing. Like, like I get a little irritated, too, as well, the taxes theft. Well, not within the system, it's not. 
but it's it's what it is. It's 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 worse than just theft if it's outside and they apply it to somebody. Do you have a knowledge to cause you to be the distinct the distinction? Well, I've talked about this as well, and it, again, without losing without uh, without people believing this uh, that this is the answer, you're looking like the immigrant, looking like the outlaw without actually being the outlaw. See, the, the government is the outlaw. <laughs> so you're going to look like an outlaw, but you're not. But you have to be able to articulate how you're not. And if you can't, and not just as an opinion, but as a set of facts in a, in a, in a remedy uh, applied, a counter, a collateral attack of some sort, if you don't engage right now, even those of you with licenses, you don't engage now. This database is coming through the Real ID Act. This is not even new news. But you're down to the last bit of it now. This will be have to. Otherwise, you will not, you don't have the number, or you don't have the ID, you don't get to participate in the society. I'm a poet and don't know it, folks. The, the, this article tells you that it's throughout the system. Your digital, your big data is all part of it as well. But anyway, I don't, I, I don't even know what to say more. I don't even, those of you that have been listening and tracking, you know this is here. I'm telling you, you have done, taken no steps to be those that would be avoiding the consequence of this surveillance and tracking system that is our future. That right as the ID steps in, you will start finding you can't do more and more things because you are without it. And I've asked you to point, identify this where they've gone through. I said, Commerce, you better make a record and show how you have a right that's asserted against the before the government got here. They're supposed to serve that, and that all this imposition is not needed on someone that's innocent and just traveling. That's not in commerce and not a commerce subject. Have you even started to approach it that way? I don't know how that could jeopardize anybody with a license. That becomes either a mistake or a fraudulent misrepresentation to you. That's two things that you get to start off. For those of you in UCC, that's also wrapped up in there. You, Again, these, the things I tell you are pretty consistent across jurisdictions on the remedies. They just have a different name for the same steps to take. Unprecedented architecture and surveillance created by Facebook and Google poses grave human rights threat, says the report. Okay, we can say that, but is that true, folks? Yes, on the surface, you know, it's kind of scary that they, they, that they do, but let's, type, let's look at those, civil, those human rights. This is another internationalization of a controlled term that most people embrace, they promote, they want to see everybody get human rights, and they don't have a clue what that is, what it means, what that invokes. Does it create a Facebook, does create, Facebook and Google pose a grave human rights threat, actually? Let's think about that real quick. Human rights is conditioned. I've read it. I read the condition statements in the Declaration of Human Rights. The human rights is conditioned on the state's need, and the state's need is changeable whenever the bureaucrats decide. And the, you hear the direct democracy will be: you have no property, you have no interests that are protectable against the states, you have no rights outside of human rights. Ones we declare, given that Facebook and Google are. The, the weapon chosen to implement this big data surveillance system, is it a threat to human rights or the implementer of human rights? I, I, I'm, I don't like pausing, but I have to pause. I'm wondering, what, did you hear what I said? Are these tools implementing human rights? And if they are, if you think that you can rationalize that they are because of the, what I've just set up for you, then everybody you hear about talking about human rights and protecting them doesn't understand the dynamics of what's going on. And none of them, none of them will know how to respond correctly. And they don't. And so I just want to point, I guess, I'm just trying to point out how we think wrong, how we look at this stuff. I consider it to be wrong. I would mark on the beach uh, if you want to go to the old address, but I want you to go mark on the beach at protonmail.com because they tell me it's more secure. Right? They at least say they can't. Uh, read my stuff uh, because it's encrypted off the gate. Not unlike some things I was doing some re research based on some uh, on an instigator in my email to go look at something 
that they said the, the, this new company coming on wants to take some credit for the social media. They're saying they won't read your mail. So why aren't they saying they can't? And so I won't go through all that. But uh, here we are. The, the unprecedented architecture of surveillance created by Facebook and Google, which uh, my research on somebody's claim is maybe not necessarily the fact they're actually stealing it for somebody else, but even that looks like a scam. Uh, notwithstanding, created by Facebook and Google, all this social media poses a grave human rights threat. I proposed, uh, I offered to you, it's not a threat. It's an implementation for human rights. No different than your civil rights. Those exactions of every kind. Where do I get that? Oh, this guy makes some stuff up. He's creative behind the woodshed. No, go read it, folks. Where? 42 U.S.C. Section 1981. Your civil rights aren't what you think. You want to promote civil rights? Go ahead. But you're, you're agreeing to be subject to extortions of every kind. It says it right in the, in the text in the black and white. Human rights subject to the Bureau, International Bureau Rat. Nothing, nothing is against them. Do you want those? Well, that Facebook and Google is promoting human rights. How is it an unprecedented threat to human rights? And if you haven't thought about it that way, I'm saying step back and rethink this thing and before you start thinking you know a thing or two. And I'm going to say something else. I guess I'll say, well, well what other proof do I have? Because if I take the attitude that most people have about human rights and that it's a good thing and that Facebook and Google is a threat, I make all the wrong answers and wrong decisions. When I look at it the way I just told you that they are in aiding and implementing uh, the extortion called human rights. We do so much better to counter it. It's, it's phenomenal and how fast. So you walk in with your mind or you walk in with the one I'm suggesting you need to have and then start looking at the world. You want to be a libertine boogaloo or do you want to actually should have gotten something done and protected uh, Mr. Whiskey Warrior from himself because he might have some trouble and needs the help. Now, what do I know about that? I, not much more than I'm told my colleague who actually goes in and battles with these people to make things fix, fix these things. And at the local level, he's not finding much resistance. Those people do want to help, but everybody above it in the state and the implementers, the trustees of the, of the, federal, the federal projects and the federal federalities themselves totally make work. Interfering, raising the cost of the administration, uh, removing some of the benefits from the veterans. If you knew, if you veterans were out there looking at this, you'd be able to see parts, of, in large parts of how they're diminishing your services that you deserve. I'm not, design, I'm not, not attacking that at all. Unprecedented architecture. Okay, well, I've been talking to you about alternative dispute resolution. I've been telling you that that's another weapon against you, how they pulled this off. We're talking about Facebook and Google. We're talking about creating the architecture of surveillance which is going to be the how they implement human rights which implicates your social credit remember a2030 was the future is sustainable debt how do you think they're going to keep track of that and i told you the corporations that they're being set up to implement this thing and what i can tell you is not a threat to human rights but the promoter of it for the future which is less than what you're going to get in places like the United States of America of the rights that you should enjoy, even though you're not at this point, that you can assert. Uh, here comes a silent thing has been going on. I've noticed more and more links, but nobody talks about it. it it's the it's like a shining example of everything I talk about, how they're... Uh, you all, anybody who hear, has heard me or do some research on this, you'll see it, but I find very little go, talking about it. No, I want to. I hear the boogaloo going to happen, but I don't hear any boogaloo going to go against this kind of thing, which explains uh, how they're bringing this on. Even if you don't live in the future organization of what the city city will be in this, like we talked about the city citadel, the high tower where the academia lives to implement this nonsense. But Google is involved with a little story. It came through a bunch of links over some time. Sidewalk Labs. Quiet plan for Can Can Stan's banks to manage a national digital ID for health care and housing. 
what did I say? Real ID in the United States is going to be your biometric data that the DHS is going to have 259 million of you. Well, what, there's only 30 million of you up in Kanukistan, right? I mean, that could add for the difference in the number that I saw there, right? All of you all are going to be underneath this military database. Your national ID, sidewalk labs, sidewalk labs, your guinea pigs, folks. And you're allowing it. But this is an interesting problem because I'm going to have to say something here. The land that this sidewalk labs is being done on is private property, even to a corporation. And they do have the right to petition to do things for development on their land. And this is where they start seeing how these smart, how sharp, smart, how smart these people are on how they infiltrate. Because I couldn't say that I would have a right to say anything against what they want to do on their land the way I speak about private property in land. They can do what they want. The thing is, they can't do stuff that interferes outside of what they're doing. And this is where you start getting the code hearings where if someone wants to put in a development like a grocery store, they have to go to the planners and and work out how their ingress and egress of all the new traffic on the road, which is all the new traffic, how it's going to interlace with the existing structure so it doesn't what? It doesn't encumber the system or not unreasonably so, which means you can suffer a little bit. It's just the way, that's just the way we work this out. Like in a mining claim, we are, we're, although they don't agree at this point, uh, we have rights up until our border. We are subject to anything we do outside of the border of a mining claim. This is what the hydro, the hydraulic thing uh, acts, the hydraulic case was back in the time, in the day, so to speak. The miners would wash the mountains away and wash them down the rivers and wash them into the into the commerce uh, navigation channels and overwhelm uh, lowland river um, farming land. They didn't have a right to do that. So the media takes it and says, well, you can't hydraulic mine anymore, but that's not the case. You can hydraulic mine if you keep your tailings on your own property. And so this is that this is that kind of a thing. It's a long-standing interpretation of how you can use your land as long as it doesn't affect others. And if you do, then you have to get their permission or you have to get some variance to the ability to do so. Sidewalk labs, you're all guinea pigs to this, folks. They tell you, this is fascinating what they'll admit, that people just look past. And I'm not saying that there's no resistance to this, because there has been. But you need to look at these links. You need to see how they're brought in. You need to see what the people are doing. You need to see what the opposition has been. And you need to see how, ultimately, it was a like public treated to obfuscation at Waterfront Toronto meetings on negotiations with Google's sister company, Sidewalk Labs over Surveillance District. This is a lab where they work out all the uh, idiosyncrasies that make it viable. Working right in Canada, stand. If you didn't think that you were the lead country for this, folks, you're, you're 39 million people is a reflection I've told you of how they start to implement it on a grander scale. You're just big enough to be able to pull this off and mean something in the larger context of implementation where you go to a city now that already has 39 million people in it. Now you get to work quiet, more quietly in a number, in a country, a whole country that's conducive to bringing in some things smart. Sidewalk Labs document reveals company's early vision for data collection, tax powers, and criminal justice. So if you didn't think that the Bar Association can uh, occupy you with a veneer of authority, and they wrote it down, it's not like a secret, Beetle over at RLM. Good day. Thank you. Uh, here it is, right here. Another corporation, the Bar Association, uh, Sister Lab, Sidewalk Labs, a Google Alphabet Company Corporation, is going to work out for its property the vision of data collection, tax powers, and criminal justice within their territory. Private property. And they wanted 160 some odd because uh, the number might be a little bit off, but they, the city, I think, got enough. Uh, resistance from you all up there. There is resistance. They reduced it down, I think, to 10 acres. And so all this grand uh, experiment in the lab has been reduced. They're going to start it as a, a seed, the cancer. It's right there. And they talk again, another link. We keep talking about what they're um, moving on and what you can read into this. I, I brought this up because this is how uh, the governments in the United States, uh, they must be in Canada too, everywhere, Australia, this is how they go through and do and implement this stuff I've been talking about. This is out in the open. 
Now, that said, I want to remind you, this is Google's private property. So, at that level, I don't know what you have to say. It's the spill-off problems. And let me, uh, there, let me see if there's some authority in the United States relative to, what did we see there? The, can't say tax because they don't have the right to do that, but uh, fees and fines and things. Well, there's your civil rights again, right, folks? But what did, they have the right to police the land and the federal government, the BLM, the Forest Service. But what's the constraint? The constraint on those that have grants to do so. And so you start seeing, if you've been applying, you apply what I've been saying, I, I go right across the border and apply the rights that Google has in their private property uh, to what they have a right to do, but not to, the, but then questioning the extent that the city could give them permission within the constraint of this to become the seed for the cancer. Google's sister company, Sidewalk, has a, remember, Sidewalk Labs, it's a lab, uh, has a secret yellow book with its plans to reinvent cities plus possible sites beyond Toronto. These links that I have go through to show you how this is planned into the future. The future we want is what? That smart uh, city. It's even worse than the cities that you're hearing right now, the plans. This is owned by a corporation who have a criminal system, private. It's like a company store stuff. All agreed to by the du jour uh, Toronto. And maybe within their rights, within the, the land that they're, get, they're given. Land uh, leaked documents reveals Sidewalk Labs Toronto plans to private taxation, private roads, charter schools, corporate cops and judges, and punishment for people who choose privacy. Well, at some point, you're not going to agree to that by moving in. You agree to this stuff when you uh, uh, allow it, when you start using this stuff from these companies. When you move on to someone else's property as a leasee, you have to take subject to the agreement, don't you? And if you guys don't, oh, you guys, guys, you people, you folks don't understand how to do the simple writing in the Constitution to protect that. I have, I don't, I don't see the day that, that comes that you're able to defend against all this stuff as it comes on underneath the color of a right to do so. And the cities understand now how to do this and you don't understand that you already have corporate cops and corporate judges and uh, private roads even though because you don't understand how to get underneath that veneer to say, wait a minute, you may have a right of a private road, but you can't stop me and you can't put regulation and tax me for it. I don't think any of you know, uh, know about all this. You talk about it, you think you say you know about it, but you don't. It starts to get irritating to me. I want to see people that are active in their knowledge, not uh, excuse, they not, don't use it because they, they use it as an excuse or because I know. This is a neat setup here up in Canada, what they're doing to show you how your laws have been brought up in the United States for America. I know for a fact. I don't know about Kanukistan, Australia, the Crown, uh, UK countries or whatever, wherever else the rule of law is. But this was put in place. The seeds to put this in place happened in around the 1980s. It was instigated around the 1970s in the states that I understand relative to any, any land use uh, state organization that they made. It was all put in place way back then. And you'll see this will just be considered a cluster uh, uh, that will be agreed to by, the, by, that, uh, by, Tor by Toronto. Uh, then you see that. You see, you read for how they put their, their stuff together. You see, for they read for the opposition. The end result is Google's smart city in Toronto gets the green light. Okay? So this is, a, if anybody wants to find out how this works, anywhere. You just have to look at this this um, exposure now that Google went through that was reported on. I didn't see anybody respond to it. I didn't see anybody correlate what I say on how the, that it's going on or how to where they could combat it. So you're not looking, you're not interested, and these things are the future they want. You're going to be again. You're only a leasee at best, at best if you're not a corporate slave as an employee. I mean, we could be looking at the big company store. This could be the most efficient. We don't know what they what they are planning for what's efficient for the company. All right, this is what, again, the bottom line to YouTube was the money to, the, to YouTube, not your content and not your listeners. And I project, given your listeners don't click through the ads and you, I don't care how many people you have watching and how much good content you have, if you're not making a dime for the company store, you're not there, which implies that you're working 
for the company store. And so keep it up. Go ahead, keep doing it. And I said that we have an object. We have uh, people on YouTube that are somewhat simulcasting this right now and still able to. So I guess I guess we're all working for the company store in that regard. But don't forget, I try to keep this thing. Uh, Grimner helps too, is get me in other places that know we're in different places to have the broadcast go out. But for myself, when I post, I'm over at uh, BitChute now. Just to uh, I don't know what else to do with that. Over at Mines, I don't know what else to do. Just put it there. And we're in lots of other places. The Spreaker only lasts so long, folks, so uh, we got a rotating uh, a, a rotating size there. It kind of goes out over time. So I mean, the point is, is that we're all in this big digital data, big data company store at some level, unless you cut yourself out. And you see now how this will be working. The smart home tech uh, can evict renters, surveillance company tells landlords in New York. You don't even need to have a, a, a Google Cities a lab, the lab rats living in the Google's what they call the most efficient uh, city. It's already happening. Smart home tech, smart home tech will help evict renters. You keep silent, they keep moving this thing forward. You become more constrained. I don't know what more to say. I don't know what to what to do more than come here to say you got to understand what you're up against. You have to resist. It's not that there's nobody resisting. It's that the resistance is maybe not directed in the right direction, or it's not enough. People went to Toronto. People went and they said that they objected. I didn't look at the quality of the objections, but they were limited to what its effect to them would have been. Not that they didn't like a smart city. It's irrelevant. I could make, I can develop a piece of property as a smart city if I want on my private property. I may have codes of interaction to deal with on the roads or plumbing or whatever this, the state's police power might be, the county's police power. But I should, given I get those variances, I should be able to do that. If you don't speak out in the proper way relative to the interference that kind of a thing will do in your life, then you probably aren't being listened to because it's not relevant in that subject matter and request by another private property owner to use the property. Smart homes here, home tech can evict renters. This is in New York, I think it was. And they now, into, a guy intervented this thing called a, a Teeman a Gate Guard. He hooks up your... Uh, apartments to the internet and his uh, his oversight remember i told you third party uh, that he can give messages to your landlords and they can lock you out or not whenever they want i hear this happening with your cars now too i think tesla's doing that and pretty soon because of uh, now they're asking you for your thumbprint and eyeballs and all this you get locked out of your own systems you don't even own your own systems no one stopped they no one stopped that either uh, so i mean the, the self-repair the self-repair movement i i, I couldn't even conceive it was a thing, folks, and yet it is. You're watching the evidence of your life as you knew it taken away in incremental steps, and you're helping it, and you're not uh, you're not addressing it one little bit. Internet connected locks and facial recognition systems have raised privacy concern among tenants across the country. Okay, now what? You want to live there? You want to participate with someone who possesses the power? then you would be subject if you live there. One of the answers here is don't live there. Then I get a, I can hear another s storm of uh, oppression. Oh, we got to go live somewhere. Yeah, you do. That's the problem, isn't it? They, they start to buy up everything and you let them. This is another half things that happens inside the mining community. You sell out to the wrong people. It happens on ranches all the time. They make conservation areas that are violation to the use of the property and production. No one understands all this stuff under the theory that the man or the woman doing the, or the farming or the ranching is har somehow harming the land. At any rate, that's, uh, I want to get off point here. You think it's happening, if you think it's not happening, you think you need a smart city developed by Google on their property, 10 acres, that's going to expand. They say they're moving it out. They plan, they tell you how, they're giving you the blueprint. You think it doesn't exist already in the United States of America? This is the problem. There's already here. There's already people making money, third parties that get access to all this information. And they make money on the other side, like we find, what, the ring or something on the front end of your door now from Amazon that goes to the cops? 
stop that stuff, folks. You, you stop, I'm saying you try to stop that data now that it's out there. And then they blame you. Why? Because you consented to it. And then you complain. So, so remember, this SMART is not too intelligent. Sustainability, S. Mitigation, M. Adaption, A. Resilience, R. And transformation, T. Or transparency is the method of by they take. You'll see this exactly what they do here on building in how this will be ultimately the first word, sustainable, and the future they want. And if you don't understand how to address this, they are going to get that future. And when I see the response, I'm going to do this boogaloo dance now. Uh, it just in, it reinforces, again, I wrote about it, so I guess it's reinforcing that too. It reinforces that I don't think as a society we are prepared, and I don't want to get into the excuses that we weren't. I'm saying that that's no excuse. We still have to respond. We, we, there's, again, no, I should say, that's it. But there's no excuse. They're telling us how they do it. These tabs for sidewalk labs that they're putting people under is, is the, you can just print it out and use the steps. And these steps have already been done in your cities and, and counties. All of them. And guess what? You say, oh, overwhelming. What do, how do I start this? How do I stop it? It's real simple. You just assert the underlying rights. What, what have I said? You go into administrative procedures and you find a savings clause. Well, one of them I was just, we were just talking about to here this last couple of weeks is uh, unless provided by law. Well, how do you use unless provided by law? People don't even understand this stuff. What does that I mean? What does that mean? And how can just a few words mean anything? Well, when you understand, let's just go to property. So your property and your patent doesn't allow for a judiciary to interfere with it. Doesn't allow for a code enforcement officer to interfere with it. Which means the legislature doesn't have power to interfere with it. They do not have a standing to make a complaint. So that is one of the unless provided by law requirements of the existence of a, the evidence of a patent and what it says is the, the provision in law that precludes the thing beyond the comma in, in every instance of administrative imposition. Unless provided by law, the, the patent is a right to you, exclusive to get to you against the entire world. It precludes the government from enforcing the thing beyond the next comma is unless provided by law applied. Every, every provision of security given in the law for your land and for your rights is there if you understood that simple little thing and applied it. It doesn't say go boogaloo. No, it says unless provided by law. You have to know the law, not the one you make up, the one that sits right there in short and black and white sentences. You start there. The underlying grant law is the most prevailing and powerful of all of it. And then you go to statutes and codes and rules and up the, the lesser, down into the lesser and lesser. You don't argue. I tell you, don't bring an argument. Don't bring a political position. Everyone's got an opinion about politics. You don't have about your black and white. You're either in that or you're out of it. Smart isn't too intelligent. I, I said it. In fact, this came up before. I think, who was it? Uh, I don't remember now. This came up about the sidewalks, uh, smart cities and sidewalk labs. I responded, yes, and given the crickets haven't noticed, smart is not too intelligent, but the bar ass and the military police are in on it already. All right? So, like, the people live under different now before they get smarted at 42 U.S.C. 1981 and Libra Code and the Libra Code. See, we're already living underneath the servitude. We don't even know the distinction and difference here. We already live underneath it. It seems normal, except we see, oh, they're doing it. And you think that's where you press your problem on them, the Googles. And yes, you have a need to press the point, but they are just part of the bigger implementation. And that's what I want people to really to see how it's been done, how this thing does, what it goes on. Uh, this also brought up uh, long ago, I mean, thing I did on Twitter, I think Gary L. was talking about 15 years ago, the military tried to record the whole of human lives. It ended badly. And my response to that was the response of the parasitic amoebic invader 
being shamed out of existence, referring to the statement in the article, by privacy advocates, asking the question, a, quote, a prescient flash forward to smartphones is what we see today, the IoT cloud recording bought by the voluntarist. The Amoebic Invader is this system that this article back when said was shamed out of existence, and I saying the prescient flash forward of smartphones, and you're saying that it was shamed out of existence? No, it got fortified. It got went transparent on you to transform your life. Uh, such a smart single-celled creature, AIB, celled as an S E L L D. They're selling you down the river, and you're buying it. Silent weapons for quiet wars, sustainable is the response that's been. I don't know how long ago that thing was, back in the beginning of the year. This is not even a new story. We sit just waiting for the next thing to happen, and we still don't respond, and all the time it's happening against you. And every bit of this is addressable. Every bit of it is addressable. And so we hear, what is this Google City, the smart lab, this lab experiment that's going on that Toronto's buying into? Uh, they are completely on board anyway, uh, that you may or may not actually have a way against th what they do on their private property. What Toronto does to expand it into what the public needs is a whole different discussion as well, which you may have a place on. Uh, but Google reportedly plans to offer checking accounts next year. Remember they talked about having banks and stuff in the smart city. Then the report came out that in Forbes, Google reported plans to offer checking accounts next year. Let me offer something here. Remember Libra, Libra from Facebook ran into some stiff opposition. I think this was a, what they're doing here at Google is much more intelligent. They're getting themselves into the banking system before they try to show that they want to, they may be a threat to it. They can never be a threat to it, but that's what it looks like because you didn't get the, the permission of the masters. What this Google uh, reporting plan reportedly plans to offer checking accounts, when you read the story, they're really going to only be a middleman. They're going to let the system, banking system take care of it. They're going actually through, a, I think, a local uh, savings and loan company or, or, or a trade union, uh, excuse me, banking union, whatever the heck the local uh, smart. Uh, that's intelligent, too, going that way. That's a different type of style of, of regulation as well. I can't remember now the banking, the, the local union, any, any rate. Credit union. I think they're going through one of those. Again, credit's debt, right? Okay. They're going to be a middleman in this. They're going to attach themselves to the existing system. I think is the way that they're going to, the system has to go. When they take corporations and they get you to buy into what they're offering and they finally have their social currency and their things going through to something like this sidewalk labs experiment. The Google, I think, is on track a little bit more refined to what they should have, what like Facebook should have done to actually get into what we will eventually see as your social credit, social, and your, your Google, Google coins, whatever the heck they'll go on to. They call it Libra in the in the Facebook, but they went up in the wrong direction. I think this is more insidious. And when you look carefully, this is a just a, a, Google is a middleman, middle person. Okay, Google gathers health data on millions of U.S. patients without their consent was another story. Uh, again, they re, don't be evil was removed from their vernacular a couple years ago. Why? Then they started doing this stuff. What did I say about big data to third parties tied in with the government? be the most insidious and most dangerous threat to all of us. I hear not many people really amassing any coherent thought anyway, let alone a coherent action. Google is gathering detailed health records of information from millions of, of Americans without informing patients or doctors. They're segueing the entire system as a middleman on their own. And where do we get the, all the, their third-party data? They can go anywhere. Uh, going to the military, we've heard Microsoft, we've heard Google, they're all contractors. Amazon, one of the big fight between Microsoft and Amazon being the cloud. The single cell, they sell you into this system and you keep buying into it. This is the, they're telling us right here how this is working, all encapsulated in this sidewalk labs experiment in Toronto. And they're telling us now the yellow book pops out. Cowards. The yellow book pops out to explain this is much more comprehensive than might have ever been thought before to those that may be looking from the outside. To me, it's just they're just telling you what they've already done. This has been in the works for a long time. A long time.
I've been telling you about how this works. This is just the evidence of it. If you don't you keep buying in or you don't uh, uh, stop it, it gets worse and gets worse and gets worse. Getting away from it, avoiding it, becomes more and more difficult. In fact, I think I said that to an emailer. It's getting with the new real ID coming on forever and uh, for for real, real, without a debt, without a waiver, without a question. It's going to make it much more difficult for all y'all to to resist that part. Uh, I don't know what I don't want to say you can't, but uh, because I don't see anybody where they need to be right now, to let's like, say minimum two steps back, you really have to settle down and formulate what you're going to do and approach the thing so you don't get yourself in trouble because they want to bring the trouble on. You become the odd, odd man or woman out now. Because why not? Uh, why everyone was good enough for everyone else? Look at all the good we do. But you don't look behind the details of this, like Google's gathering these health records. This is not even new news. But tied together with the labs, like their uh, alphabet company labs, and you see their yellow book, and they incorporate everything you see in a government now is now administered by Google. Is it like Robo? Was it RoboCop? That was kind of thing on the on the on the law enforcement. It becomes your entire government. It, it also is this company store thing, and it becomes the norm. Why? That's the urban nights. They want to see you there, not in the countryside where the producer. I still don't understand. I looked at some of the pictures of this uh, city on ten acres. I don't see any food production there. They'll vilify all y'all that produce, but as we see, you better do it honestly like Israel. They can't say that there's some up and standing sovereign on their soil doing it legitimately. No, they've got to tell people, disclose to them the product that you're buying is produced by a, an occupier of a foreign land and not a sovereign at all. The, the, and so, truth in advertising, I suppose, is a good thing here. And for as much as I would degrade, denounce the EU as a destruction of the European Union, and uh, that that's the destruction of the independent states and their people and what they want, that truth is going to override, in my thoughts, uh, I'm not going to give any credit below that, but that statement is true. And I think it needs to be given force and effect. I didn't hear much of that going on. But going on, inside Amazon plan for Alexa to run your entire life. Google's making a little city. You'll live in that. Well, Amazon's going to get you before you get to have to get the city. I go to the stories. I don't want to talk with people that don't understand getting involved, thinking stuff is cool. She says it right in this article. I'm not going to read it. And all of a sudden, it turns out to be this realization hits you after the fact. Maybe not so smart. It's smart, but it ain't so intelligent. Every time I see this. Why? I've been talking about it for decades. You see it on your own in the news or whatever, and yet we are still progress progressing progressively into the stinking abyss by this stuff. And then here we have another interesting thing. Remember, Alexa wants to run your life. Google wants to run your life. Facebook's controlling your life. They want to make your money. They're showing you that they can do it. They just got knocked down, and now Google's coming up trying to give you a check-in account. Isn't that going to be convenient, folks? Uh, so you go through that. Why? Because they probably have maybe even some lesser standards uh, that they have to worry about because they're just a middleman anyway. You're going to have to go somewhere else anyway not realize they're just the middleman, like all, like a lot of merchants are. But, but now, okay, now you have your whole life wrapped up with Alexa wants to control your life. You think Siri is any different? I find it interesting. They're all women's names at this point and and doing this kind of thing as well women and, and ch children and the indigenous comes from the fed from the thing uh, from the international law don't take offense women what i'm saying here this is indicative of something you need to be noticing how they're playing this out uh, hackers can silently control your google home alexa siri with laser light now they're telling you that they have a technology here very interesting this is actually not much different than i think uh, Long time ago, long time ago, they used to have a. It was a fantastic new new technology at the time, where we could uh, put voices on on light, and you could speak into in light to light converters and receivers. This does a similar thing, uh, and they want to make they want to tell you now that they can come through your Alexa Siri devices, your home devices, your Nest devices. If they can get a bead on those devices, they can reprogram them. So now you have infiltration, another vector that can into Google is trying to run your life. Well, some hacker wants to run your life. This is the world that you're bringing yourself into. I say a lot of this is brought up so that they give the government, the yeah, the government, Google and Facebook plausible deniability that they did anything. 
it's like the snow job uh, disclosure where he discloses that the NSA can do all these things. And one of the things they showed out was that they can change uh, the identity of the people that did it. And I said that right there all by itself tells me that the NSA is letting this out to cover their future actions. Because if you everybody knows that there's a there's a way to cover, obscure your identity or change it to mean somebody else's instead of putting me, I'm doing it, that they put you did it. Then we have plausible deniability everywhere. And they're not interested about it being identified or not. They're interested in whether or not they gain access to defeat you. Well, which is admirable. Again, admiral, admiralty in, in war. But that's their make. Again, you're the victim of the war that they've declared against you, the mischaracterization. Hackers can silently control your Google Home Alexa Siri with laser light. Well, there's all kinds of places, ways they can get at all that, folks. We've talked about it over the time. This is not not new. The point is that we have everybody trying to control your life. They tell you they're going to control your life. They're the future that they want, not you. Uh, now you're going to have a, a third party that you won't ever know what's coming down. You can't ever trust what's happening, and yet you have to live in this uh, this organized chaos. Order, what is it? The ordo chaos? Whatever the heck that Latin phrase is. Order from chaos. It gets your life chaotic, and they're in control of it. They blame the hackers, and they're the ones that are doing it. How do you know? And so you keep getting into this technology without understanding it fully, and this is how they gain control. And then I want to add, this was kind of an interesting story to me when I added it onto this smart city, AI, communications, 5G, all this big inter interrelated thing. Uh, sand thieves, of all things, folks, sand thieves believed to be behind epidemic of Chinese GPS jamming. What's this story about? Ships captains and outside monitoring firms have reported waves of GPS jamming around Shanghai's ports on a scale and of a severity never seen before. The jamming causes ships' locations to be incorrectly displayed and to jump around. The observations were confirmed via anonymized data set that from a short hire bike firm whose bikes are all so mysteriously appearing and disappearing at locations all through the region. The spoofing has created a massive local ship hazard and has led to spectacular shipwrecks. Can I get it back over from China and put it over here on autonomous vehicles and ask you something about GPS in those, please? Is that so smart? Well, it's real smart, but not too intelligent. Yeah, Ordo Abkeo. Thank you, Vinny. Is that it's, it's sand thieves, of all things, just causing a jamming of GPS, which all AI will be looking at relative to location? and your autonomous cars, and all your robots, and your Amazon flyers all getting jammed was two things here, folks. One, your life goes into heck if you put in, uh, give it over into it, number one. Number two is, this is how you destroy it. You, too, could become a sand thief. thief. Uh, fascinating little insights to me. This brought up, I think, uh, also, the idea, interestingly, well, I won't go there. It's a, we're just going to talk about Max Headroom interjecting because of all this AI. Deutsche Bank, I was going to talk about Deutsche Bank. Yeah, I might touch that. No, it's not going to be today. Deutsche Bank bringing in more AI. I said the theory, the thought was, you know, I was talking about this a week ago. AI, all these AIs are going to be monitors. You're going to be looking at some constructed face is going to be the, the teller, which may not be a bad thing because that's all you're going to get anyway. And then uh, the idea is that you're going to have, just to make it interesting, Max Hedrew will show up just to make things fun, just to make things interesting on your banking account, on your life. And this will be the hackers or this will be Google or Facebook. Well, ironically, I just found out that the uh, Max Headroom piracy happened this week, I think. <laughs> Didn't know about that until this week. Uh, interesting how your thoughts kind of correlate with time. Uh, but this was another interjection of the past telling us what the future could be like, and you would have no control over it. Sand thieves. First of all, don't be in a ship in that place, but do you want now to be able to interfere with everybody else's life just because you're a troll or because you're fed up? Well, we might have the technology to live that life the brave future they want to put you in that they don't want to have a consideration for. I would have never thought that sand thieves in China would have caught my interest like it did and the chaos that happens on simple jamming techniques. Now, will they solve that? Likely they can do things. I don't know. 
The point is, are you going to live in a society that's now given itself over like Toronto has to the smart city, and it's not finds out it's not so smart after people start dying? I guess my point here is those people that are fighting, that you are out there fighting, you take these stories and you show that until the uh, people who want to make that technology applicable can answer to this problem that's caused as an unintended consequence, that they have to protect against that. And until they do, they can't. That's one of the ways you get in to stop it. You show the harms by these examples I keep reading to you on the on the web that are telling us this is happening now. Hackers are jumping in. They can do. How are you protecting it? You haven't protected against this thing, this thing that you go. It's right through the news. You find all these nasty things that are going on, and the sand thieves are just protecting themselves. Why are the sand thieves? They need the sand for construction. The bay has got lots of sand, and they're not supposed to be taking it. So they've outlawed minerals, folks. Aggregate sand. And to get around that, people are jamming the signal so they could not be found by the by the police. The problem is that causes what? Unintended consequences outside of what they're doing. And that's how you start to show that we as a people don't know. We think we know. We have models that say that make us believe we know. But as we look everywhere in the world, models aren't reality. You have to find, one of the ways you're going to do this, folks, is you're going to find these evidences of the unintended consequences, and then you'll impose that as a requirement to make sure and guarantee it won't happen. I might add a little bit here, even if you wanted to throw bonding on top of that, which is a scourge in most normally to us, you put those on a corporation, you put that bond high enough to cover all manner of violation and make a process that's easy for collection, then you're going to start to force these companies to really do more if this is even viable. So sand thieves, folks, GPS interference, ships crashing. These are very experienced people. I guess they look at their map, GPS maps, too, and don't look out over the bow. Can you imagine what that's going to do to your autonomous cars and people relying on GPS maps? How many stories have we said behind the windshield? People get lost all the time. This will be a normal occurrence. Talk about anonymous. Amazing. And so we're walking right into all this. We don't need to, but we're going to allow it. But we're going to wait for the boogaloo, folks. We're going to wait till that one time. All ten of us are going to be waiting for the, the the whiskey warrior to lead us to the charge. Without a clue. Uh, big data, these hackings. I've been telling you they make new IDs, the accessible databases, the biometrics. They write your dossier for you. That's for your life. Uh, then we come up with a terrifying deep fake app. lets you swap faces with virtually anyone. I told you that what Israel, we told it, Israel, the pipsqueak, non-sovereign occupier, can change your DNA, make your DNA, put you somewhere. Uh, the the digital technology, they can put you somewhere. Uh, I've told you that they can put, you can be innocent, they can put you somewhere. Someone gets, you get on someone's radar, they can put you somewhere. Now you see they can do the, uh, again, we saw a little bit of this with the mouth thing. You can get a some dictator in chief talking on the screen and you can say other words within how fast now they've gotten digital and uh, video interaction the deep deep terrifying deep fake app lets you swap faces with any virtually anyone anywhere they can the technology is here to take all this big data and put it on you folks you don't have to be guilty you just have to be existing right ai clones your voice after listening for 5 seconds phenomenal five seconds and it can put together you can be reading a testimony all you want they just take five seconds now so now i'm a little relieved on this broadcast where they they get hours and hours i don't have to worry about them compiling all my phenomes no they can listen to you for five minutes folks five minutes and they got your voice and they got it anywhere they want they put it anywhere they want and that's the world the future that they want for you do you want that remember thank you for what you do at real thank you for all you do and keeping us going and keeping tabs on it all. And Jules, uh, thank you. Uh, UCY TV back, uh, is back up. It was down for, I think, last week. Thank you there. Sound Minds, Normalization and Ignorance, uh, Grammy Mary at the Spreaker, thank you all for what you do. Uh, thumbs up if you can. Thumbs down. I'd ask you to give me a reason. Uh, normally you don't, so it's just a laugh for me. I think it's a joke because uh, we got to do something here, not just thumbs down. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.